Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Crash Star Gaming. Today we're playing Klonoa. Oh, it's the happiest game in the world. It's so adorable. I'm super hyped about this game. Oh, it's great. Um, first things first. Before you start the game, you can go over to the language set settings. It initially has it on English, which is fine, I suppose, but for the sake of this and keeping it like the original, the 1998 PS1 classic, we're going to keep it on Phantom Isle because oh, it's just so much more adorable than the English one. Um, this is... or maybe it's 1997. That's what the Wikipedia said. Anyway, this is not going to be 100% run. Um... But then again, I said that with the Jack and Daxter one, and I was somewhat accurate, I guess. But, uh, I'm going to try to get as many collectibles as I can, but that's not going to be the main point of this LP. It's mainly just going to be kind of me gawking over how adorable this game is, because I have not actually... This is actually the first time I've played this in a long while, so... And I didn't even get that far when I first played it, so let's just kick it off. I don't really find it strange as much as I find it very annoying. Especially if it was like a, you know, if it was like a really cool dream. It always pisses me off. I don't know. Oh, good for you. Good for you, mister. I can remember all my dreams. It's a big ass butterfly. Oh, look how cute he is. Oh. Oh shit, it's a ring from Sonic. Look, he's got Pac-Man on his hat! Ah! Oh. oh, it's so cute. <laughs> Sorry. Oh! So cute! And then they became best friends forever. <laughs> Oh. Oh, this game is just oh, it's so damn adorable. Oh. Oh fuck. Well, this got dire very quickly. Ah. Uh, well, fuck. Oh no! Oh, it's oh, a little sleep hat. It's so cute. Ah, his eye. Ah. Oh. Oh fuck! Get somebody get in my way! Who put this mountain here? Well, that person's fucked. Oh. Just, just him talking is so adorable. Okay, so, uh, for those of you who are watching the regular version, cool, welcome back on the cutscene. We're Here's the controls. Um, so Klonoa is a side-scroller platform in uh, much the same vein as Kirby, I suppose. And yet somehow this game is more adorable than Kirby. At least I believe so. Uh, Klonoa has the thing has his ring called uh, has a ring that can use a technique called the Wind Bullet, which is basically grabbing stuff, using it for a double jump. Klonoa can also float with his little bunny ears and feet. It's all very zen. And Klonoa can shoot uh, enemies like so in a multitude of directions. Breaking this little symbol frees out these little prisoners, which I'll be trying to get as many as I can. This basically just tells you how to double jump. 
You just gotta pick up a guy, do this. Oh. I have no idea what these clocks are for. I'm sure they're important. So yeah, Klonoa. He's a character made by Bandai Namco that apparently is... He, he's been in a bunch of shit, actually. Like... Oh, it's so cute. Uh, he's been in a bunch of stuff. He's mostly known for his whole Wahoo thing. Um, but he's been in a costume in Tales of Symphony. He's been a statue. He's been in a... He's, been a, he has, he's had his own volleyball game. He's been in an RPG. He's been in a bunch of stuff. It's... Oh. Ah, uh, okay. Who are you? Where are you from? Where are you? Oh, look at that guy! Oh my god. <laughs> and he's dead. Oh, fuck. What? Look at his arms! Look how skinny those arms are! <laughs> Stone Master, bullshit! You have no arm strength. Klonoa's got thicker arms than you. Oh, even with a mustache, these things are adorable. It's like fucking Scooby-Doo. It's like an angry little dog. <laughs> He's getting hyped over it. It's like, you know, I'm starting to have Tower of Babel flashbacks. Okay, dial it back there, buddy. Yeah, let's leave this freakazoid. Leno, he's right there. Whoa! Okay. Uh, the English voice acting of this game is available in the new version. Um, in this version of the game. It's okay, I guess. Uh, Laura Bailey voices Hupo. And you know, I like Laura Bailey and all. She's cool. But, uh, I don't know. It just, it wouldn't feel right to play it without the original voices, or play it without, like, the original language, I suppose. So this game has multiple paths, too. It's, it's pretty cool. You can go one way, you can go up one path, you can, you know, I'm, that's not, I'm not saying it properly, whatever, it just, uh, shit. Coins are extra lives! There. There, there's a bit of commentary. Fuck. I'm just awestruck. This game looks so damn colorful. Look how cute this is. Look at all this. The enemies are adorable. Although, they got these weird little faces. This thing makes all the little gems you're collecting worth even more. There you go. As I recall, rescuing all the prisoners accesses a hidden level. So, like I said, I will do my best to get all of them. But, oh, okay. But it's, uh... Unlike Jack and Daxter, I never actually beat this game all the way to completion. Yeah, I'm just gonna save with my old save file. Oh, man. Oh, shoot. Sorry. So yeah, we got all six. And look, they formed a little band! Oh, so cute! And he has to do a little pose, too. Oh man. So yeah, Klano is like I guess he's like one of Band or one of Namco's bigger characters cuz he I think uh they had DLC for the Soul Calibur games with a costume for him. I want to say they did at least. That seems like a thing they do. They did it for Tekken. Uh 
Besides this, he has a sequel called Klonoa 2, uh, Lunieta's Veil. Vale. Lunieta's Veil, vale, I believe it's what it's called, for the PS2, which is worth a fucking fortune nowadays, at least on Amazon, I could think. This game is about, I don't know, it's about six years old or so, and this thing ran for about 40 bucks on eBay. So it wasn't that bad of a deal, I suppose, but getting a new copy is... I don't know, it's one of the easier games to get, I suppose. You know, everybody says that Kirby is like... is a super easy game for babies and stuff. I find... but it's also super cute. I find this is like a happy medium. This is a... Uh, it's a nice little side-scroller, it's not too easy, but it's also highly, highly adorable. But... I believe as we'll soon see, or as we already saw, this game also has its... can have its dark moments. Or at least attempt to. And the music is just so enchanting. I guess that's kind of a thing for Bandai Namco games. If I remember correctly, I think this was actually made with the uh, with the merger between Bandai and Namco. That's kind of like a little... Like I said, this was the 10 year anniversary of Klonoa, so... I figured, yeah, the Wii is a good thing for kids and young adults. People would like this. And you know, Klonoa hasn't had his own game in a while, so... Sure, let's throw him, let's throw him on the same console as Mario. That'd be cool. It works for him. Oh man. Okay, and as I recall, you keep hearing Klonoa say Wahoo. Swear, hand to God, in the case for this game, there is, I'm assuming it's expired by now, but there's like a coupon for a place called like Wahoo Tacos. I'm not even kidding. It's like a thing called Wahoos. <laughs> oh, man. I'm sure it's well past, like, expired now, but it's... It, it's still pretty... It's still pretty cute, I guess. Um... Yeah. On the wiki, they have a... A Klonoa to English, like, dictionary thing that kind of translates all of Klonoa's... Phantomile words to English. And saying Wahoo is basically an affirmation. It's basically like, yeah! Or okay! Or alright! Something like that. I did not read the entire dictionary. Um, it's on the wiki. It's just an adorable language that makes even some of the more... It just makes everything even more adorable than it already is. And all the enemies are just kind of okay with the fact that they've just been enhanced like frickin' Dig Dug. Like, oh, now I'm just enhanced, now I'm just thrown like super huge into a ball and I'm gonna be shot as a projectile. This is my life, and I'm okay with this. This basically says just shoot an enemy at this target, and do this, and there you go. There we go. We got all the prisoners for this level. So, let's just move on to, uh... I think we're getting to the... Yep, yeah, this is a boss mountain. We're definitely getting to the end here. Alright, here we go. Aw, oh, it's like... It's so cute. Whoa. Okay, you're our antagonist. Joka! Gaudius. Gaudius. All the names. Oh, okay. Oh, God, it's Zant! It's fucking Zant, you guys! Zawaldo! Wow, so not even a shade of gray at all with this fucker. It's just pure evil. I'm gonna destroy the world. 
<laughs> Joker's digging it. So I'm guessing Phantom Isle is like some variation of Japanese. And yet he's still smiling. I wonder why, but they can fucking see you assholes! <laughs> or maybe he can't, because his fucking mask is obscuring his vision. Joker! That's how I'm gonna refer to this fucker from now on. I hope they don't see us, Hupo! Where are you? I can't see you! The fuck? Oh, there you are! How did I not see you? Oh, even when Hupo tries to sound tough and intimidating, he's still so adorable! Look at his arms and legs! How the fuck can you move with that heavy ass head? Your legs would snap! I choose you, giant nose chameleon thing. Showtime! Showtime. Watch out for your obvious weak point. Yeah, Joker, little, uh, little tip. Don't tell your enemies what the weaknesses of your monster is. It's kind of a bad idea. So, Rongo Longo. Oh, the names are even adorable. What the fuck? Okay. So yeah, Joker's not really doing anything. He's just hanging out. Oh, fuck. Yeah, the pattern is not that hard to pick out. Just walk toward him, make him jump, and then hit him on the ass. Or just do that. Oh, oh well. No! How could you defeat my invincible monster? Okay, see you later, fuckers. Like, what the f- How is that in there? Did she duct tape it or something? Huh. Pretty. Put two and two together, you guys. I can't get over the little Pac-Man symbol on his hat. Oh! Oh, it's so cute! Oh! Where am I? What is this? Who are you people? Oh man, even as old crotchety motherfuckers, these things are still adorable. Who are you? Why are you in my house? Why is there a floating blueberry in front of me? I can't see anything! I'm gonna go ahead and hold on to this obvious important MacGuffin. You guys go ahead. Okay, Grandpa, bye. We're just gonna leave you with the super important relic that the bad guys will probably come back for. Yay! So now we're done with Vision 1. And Vision 1, 2. Alright. And we got all the prisoners. Cool.
So in the next episode of Crash Star Gaming, we will tackle on Vision 2-1. Alright, I think that will do it for another this episode. Thank you for watching. See ya.